So, uh, next one is uh, Marco Marknes and Jan Untersander. Um, welcome to the stage. Oh, yeah, we need to switch laptops for a second. That should just take a second. And. Ta -da. Okay, welcome. Thanks. Where is it? Thank you. Wait a sec. Oh, can you see it? <laughs> well, welcome to our talk. So it's, uh, as Damien already mentioned, it's going to be about network automation. Um, it's actually, mm, can you, yeah, uh, well, that probably won't work. Uh, it's actually my first talk. I'm Jan. Um, at my first talk at the conference, I'm working at the Institute for Network and Security at the university here in Switzerland. So I've spoken in front of people, but not that many people. Um, yeah. Yeah, my name is Marco Martinez. Uh, the last people that, or last year at Swinnock, probably people saw me. I'm working at Swisscom as an infrastructure automation architect, and I'll be happy to guide you through this presentation with a short live demo. Let's hope for the best. <laughs> but first, before we talk about the challenges of doing a demonstration live, we talk about the challenges in modern network automation. So most of the challenges I see when I look at infrastructures, usually there are some configuration files we store in Git. We have this other random file that we have that is needed that we deploy onto our systems. We split all our information into different technical domains. Um, we have the technical documentation, which is usually not the same as the organizational requirements. And we have the security policy that changes from time to time, but nobody is aware of that. And just things run in, in their own lane. So what we're trying to do is we try to reduce all the manual steps we need to apply a, a, to a configuration and to changes. So we just have one source that we have all the um, the information in there that is in the different domains. All the security, all the organizational requirements, we have the technical documentation, we all have it in one place, it is all in sync, and we actually have it on our infrastructure. Nobody can use anything that is not on the infrastructure, because we all know that this, this random Excel, it says X, but if you go onto the device, it says Y, <laughs> so we don't want that. And also some common challenge points is that we have delays between our source of truth, how we get it onto the device. It usually takes a couple of minutes, hours, or maybe even weeks if we have some manual review processes. We don't have any visibility. We don't know what the actual state is right now. We don't know what it was yesterday. We don't know what it's going to be tomorrow. We have some drift occurring. Maybe we apply something now. Then this random engineer goes and fixes it because it took down the whole network. And we also have some errors in deployment that maybe nobody notices. So our idea is that we have something we call the living source of truth. So every change goes through that source of truth. The source of truth demonstrates what we have, what we do, and also what is the actual state of the infrastructure right now? And is this the, the state, if we change it, it's also going to be a change on the infrastructure. Then one of the, the common pain points we have is we have this, this, one, this one holy system with all the information. But then we go ahead and do, it, do the change manually. So this we don't want. We want to change it on like a web interface, or we want to change it with infrastructure as code. And we want this to be the real truth. So the benefits we're getting from that is we're getting immediate consistency because everything in the source of truth is the, is the truth in the real world. We have fewer manual steps because we want to do it um, right on time. And we have faster feedback, loop, feedback loops. If we break something, we know it immediately. And also, we have a very transparent process, like Damien talked about. It's all about transparency. So we built a little proof of concept um, of such a tool stack. Um, in the center, you'll see there 
a source of truth. Uh, we used InfraHub for this particular example because it has a clearly defined API. It also has a web UI that people can use. So this means a user can either go to the web UI uh, if he wants to do that and do changes there, or he, either, he also can use some infrastructure's code tool like Ansible or anything else. Uh, we used Terraform in the example. Um, for this, because InfraHub has a flexible schema where you can define how the model should look like, what you want to store in your source of truth, how all the connections, all the relationships between your objects in your um, source of truth is. Um, Marco wrote a little uh, Terraform provider generator. So we actually create our own Terraform provider for that. And on the other side, if you have your source of truth, you also, we, we want to automatically apply that somewhere on the network. So there uh, we have a tool called Vidra that reads the configuration artifacts from InfraHub and applies it on the Kubernetes cluster as custom resources from the schema-driven configuration. I don't know if you've heard of that tool, but it's an open source tool that allows you to configure, uh, declaratively configure your network devices with custom resources in Kubernetes. And if you have applied those tool, uh, those configurations, the, the schema-driven configuration tool will make sure that whatever your state was in InfraHub or is in InfraHub, it will be reflected on your network devices. So it will make sure that the, there is no drift between them. So a little bit more about InfraHub. Um, it could be any tool, but we chose InfraHub because it is it does have versioning, as Damien already also mentioned. Um, we wanted to have that as well for a good network automation tool stack. We want to have versioning, so you can do diffs. Um, it does ha is API centric. It provides nice APIs to use for actually expanding this network automation tool stack. Um, it provides some diffs. It has some continuous integration, CI capabilities, and also with the extensions we built, um, there are some continuous deployment integrations. So there is also some support for Ansible and Ornir, but we chose to go another way with uh, SDC. Okay. Good. Now comes the good part. I hope it looks a little more professional than this slide. Um, so let's go ahead. So what we're doing today is we will do our own little um, demo network. So we just call it, well, let's call the branch network. I think is a very suitable title. Then we go ahead. Um, we have this little thingy here. We have a Terraform script. This one just uh, declares, I quickly put the branch. This just declares what we want to do. So we're querying a few things. We have like our type, so it's going to be a, a Nokia device. We're going to put it in some AS. We're going to have a, a management IP, and we're going to create some interfaces. Don't worry, you don't need to understand it all. Can everybody see it? Maybe I make it a little tiny bit better, bigger? Better? A little more? OK. OK. <laughs> everybody able to see the, the thing? Good. So we're just creating two spines, three leaves, and we're going to put some interfaces on that. Um, so let's go ahead. I put the branch network, and we also have the API key. Um, I'm just going to go quickly ahead and put Terraform apply. It's going to read it, and it's going to create that. What we can do in the meantime, we can check on the, on the interface. We can check, oh, we created some devices, and also we created some interfaces. 
If we go back to the devices, we can see here very clearly on the main branch, there is nothing. So this is what we want to do. We don't want to put it directly into production. I'll quickly going to label the devices as well and put it into the Nokia group. Um, right. So what we don't want to have is we don't want to put things into production right away. So I'm going to propose a change here, and we're going to merge that. I'll do that my awesome network. So we're going to propose this change. Now we have the, the, the compliance thingy that somebody can take a look at it, but I'm a professional, so I can merge it straight into, <laughs> uh, <laughs> into main. We can see our, our changes here. And there were also some checks. Um, since I'm a professional, I'll go right ahead and merge it. I don't need any approvers. Oh, they're um, unable to merge containing failed checks. Let's see. Oh, because it wasn't done. Yeah, very professional. If I merge it now, maybe I just didn't wait long enough because I was this professional. Now it's merging. <laughs> oh, I was getting worried for a second. <laughs> Yes, so we can see we got our devices in main now. And what we can see here is that we have an artifact generated. What I didn't tell you is I had this artifact definition beforehand in there. So if I have a Nokia device, it straight away takes the information of the interfaces, and it will manage them on my physical network. So I booted up a, um, a tiny container lab having two spines, three leaves, and those interfaces are now managed by my source of truth. Well, in, uh, in the background, we can check is on the Kubernetes cluster is uh, getting managed by our STC program. So what we can see here is we have these, these config templates. It's called interface leaf one, leaf one. And this is getting managed by that. This automatically, as soon as I push it into main, it will manage my interfaces. So the really cool thing what I can do now is I can make changes. So we go ahead and we say we put something into maintenance. Um, well, I mistyped it, but it doesn't matter. Um, so we go ahead and, uh, well, the issue of mistyping it is also I need to put it in the right uh, how did I type it? Make the typo twice. <laughs> yeah, make the typo twice, maintenance. Good. So now we go ahead in the, into the other branch. And let's just say, yeah, we don't need the, the, the spine interfaces anymore. So I'll just shut them. Um, I go ahead and apply that for a second. Um, so what we're doing now is I can go and check my interfaces on the maintenance task. And I don't see it. Where did I do it? Yeah, you put it to true. Oh, it should be false. That's right. <laughs> yes, very professional. Never make typos. Um, that's why you don't do it in production, by the way. Um, so now that I proved this point, I also got it here. So I see now my spine one, Ethernet one, two, three, all shut. Um, so what I want to do next is I go propose the change again, um, put that in, use the, the branch, and uh, shut interface. I propose this change, and we'll merge it. So now, until this is applied, we see is successfully applied, and it should be there within a minute. Um, so now, as we're waiting on that, is I can tell you this also works if I do it the other way around. I can do, I can do it on the web interface. I can shut the interfaces, and it will do it on the devices. But what happens if I go onto the device and shut it there? Any guesses? It doesn't work. It gets overwritten within a few seconds. So the nice thing here, now we can see all our spine interfaces are shut. So that, that's what the nice thing about that is. Everything that is in the main branch here is actually the whole reality and nothing but the reality. Um, yes. So 
Um, that is the cool thing. I don't need to use Terraform for that. I can use any tool. I can use the web interface. I can use whatever. Uh, and the cool thing is if I go onto the device and shut it from there or take it up, it will go ahead and overwrite all the things. So nobody is in temptation of fixing something manually. Um, I think that's most of what I wanted to show. I'm going to go ahead and skip uh, the part where I put it on the web interface and open it for questions. Coming. I think it was a bit unexpected. Uh. <laughs> Say your name and your Don't question. Um, yeah. uh, Ignacio from CKP. Uh, nothing to do with infra, of course. Um, all this is on a custom defined resource in the Kubernetes. Can someone go there and start filling around? Um, technically, yes. In practice, I would hope that your Kubernetes cluster is not open for everybody. No, no, of course it's not. No, no, <laughs> definitely not. They're professionals. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Well, actually, no, yeah, if you delete the, the resource sync, you, uh, you can. But if you don't delete the resource sync, it will get overwritten. Yeah, as long as you have the, res the tool which does the sync between the infra hub and the Kubernetes cluster, it will get overwritten on the Kubernetes cluster if you manually change the config resource from SDC. So. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Ciprian from Sunrise. Uh, I have a question concerning the statefulness of the tool here. So how many uh, resources is it aware of? Do we have a model on the infrastructure? Is it aware of, let's say, ports and admin stuff and so on? Or multiple uh, parameters? Um. So um, <laughs> because this is just a proof of concept, we, we didn't like cover all all the state of uh, device, um, you, but you theoretically could. You could cover all whatever state you want to manage. You could cover that in InfraHub and sync it through the whole chain to the device. I'm thinking because uh, it's uh, fairly easy to enforce north-south synchronization, like you have a template and you push it to the device, whatever happens there. But how about south to north, for instance, static routes? You have a collection of extra static routes on the device, how will the extra ones be removed as a consequence, for instance, of the north-south synchronization only? Maybe I can take this question. So what you can do, um, if I get your question right, I think you want to do uh, additional steps on, on certain devices. And where Binary sync. Sorry? Sync in both directions. Oh, sync in both directions. Um, so what you would need to do is have some infrastructure as code tool that, that puts it in the source of truth. So we basically want to have everything here. Um, what you can do is, um, this is uh, on the background, it's using Yang models. So it technically, it doesn't override all of it. So you can configure it this way. You can see here, um, it just touches the interfaces we configured here. Maybe I make it a little bigger so everybody can see it. But uh, it just touches whatever we configured here. And it's not touching the other interfaces, for instance. So if you don't have the closed loop thing, you, you can configure your devices. Otherwise, like out of the source of truth, but, but the sync back, you would have to use either put it with an infrastructure as code tool into InfraHub or just manually. Okay, thank you. We have time for one more question. Okay, then, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.